Okay, picture this. You're sitting down, maybe you're stressing out a brand new server, right? right? Let's say it's a Dell PowerEdge T360. Nice. And you're dreaming of this like really robust data setup. You want Proxmox, you want ZFS, you're all set. The dream setup for many. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then, just as you're about to confirm the order, you get this surprising piece of advice, maybe from the sales team themselves. Mm -hmm. Skip the traditional PRC controller. Whoa, okay. That definitely goes against the grain, doesn't it? For years, hardware RAID controllers like PRRC were almost standard issue. Totally. So, all right, let's unpack this because it's a really interesting puzzle. This yeah. deep dive is all about exploring that. We're looking into this uh, lively debate in the online communities right. about why skipping the PRC is actually seen by many as a smart move, maybe even a breakthrough for Proxmox users wanting to really get the most out of ZFS. So our mission here is kind of showing how this advice, which sounds a bit weird at first, could actually save you money and unlock some serious performance wins. Exactly. And we're digging into the real world discussions, you know, the technical forums, community posts, <laughs> pulling out the key insights from folks who are actually doing this stuff. Stuff, getting it straight from the source. Okay, so let's lay the groundwork first. Mm -hmm. Proxmox, Super powerful open source virtualization platform. You see it everywhere, home labs, enterprise. Yeah, it's incredibly popular, very flexible. And ZFS is often its perfect partner, right? It's mm -hmm. way more than just a file system. It's basically software RAID on steroids, handling data integrity, snapshots, all that good stuff. Absolutely. It manages the whole volume, the whole pool. And then you've got the Dell PRC, the PowerEdge RAID controller. It's been the go-to in Dell servers for managing hardware RAID arrays for ages. Right. So the core question, the thing that really kicked off this whole discussion online was, <laughs> is that PRC actually needed or even helpful when you're using Proxmox with ZFS? Or is it, you know, just an extra cost and maybe even a hurdle? And that initial scenario really framed it perfectly. This user configuring a PowerEdge T360, four SAS drives, aiming for Proxmox and ZFS. Yeah. And Dell's own sales team says, hmm, maybe don't get the PRC. Connect the drives directly. Or use an HBA, a host bus adapter. And that's what got people talking. Because why? Why would ZFS not want a dedicated hardware RAID controller? Exactly. What's the logic there? Well, it really comes down to how ZFS works at its core. Unlike traditional hardware RAID, where the controller manages everything and presents a logical volume to the OS, ZFS wants raw, direct access to the physical drives themselves. Ah, okay. No middleman. Precisely. That direct control lets ZFS do its unique magic, detecting silent data corruption, mm. managing redundancy intelligently, checking integrity block by block. It needs to see the drives, warts and all. And the community jumped right on this. We saw quotes like, ZFS should have native access to the drives. Perk would be in between and prevent ZFS from being used. Pretty clear. Yeah, very direct. Another user put it even more strongly, something like, the whole point of ZFS is that it handles the RAID, the volume management, everything. Putting a hardware RAID controller in front just undermines the whole reason you chose ZFS. Right, it defeats the purpose. And it causes practical problems too. When a PRX is in RAID mode, it abstracts the drives. Mm -hmm. ZFS can't easily see the underlying SMART data, you know, the drive zone health diagnostic. Oh, that's critical for predicting failures. Exactly. And simple things like replacing a specific failed drive become much more complicated for ZFS to manage cleanly. Someone online summed it up kind of brutally. You get all the disadvantages of ZFS with none of the benefits. Ouch. But wait, what about pass-through mode? Some PRCs claim to offer that, right? Where they supposedly just pass the drives through individually. Ah, uh, yes. The pass-through debate. Theoretically, it should work. But the community consensus is, well, let's say skeptical. Hmm. We saw comments like, I have yet to see a pass-through mode that actually functions as a proper HBA. People find it can be unreliable, especially on newer Dell servers, sometimes flaky, sometimes not passing through all the necessary info, like full SMART data. So it might look like it's working, but ZFS isn't getting everything it needs. Often, yeah. The overwhelming feeling is if you want ZFS to work optimally, reliably, you really want a true dedicated host bus adapter, an HBA, not a RAID controller pretending to be one. Okay, so let's talk HBAs. What exactly makes them different? Why are they the preferred choice here? It's simple, really. An HBA, unlike a RAID controller, doesn't do RAID. Its job is just to connect the drives to the system's main bus, hence host bus adapter. It acts like a clean pipe. Gotcha. It just presents the raw disks directly to the operating system. No abstraction layer, no hidden management. That's exactly what ZFS wants. And the original poster, the one with the T360, 
they actually updated their plan based on all this feedback. Oh, yeah. What did they go with? They chose the Dell HBA 355i, described it as Dell's true non-RAID controller, specifically designed to expose drives individually, crucially, with full SMART data support. Nice. Yeah, the HPA 355i is basically built for exactly this kind of scenario, connecting SAS drives directly for software-defined storage like ZFS. The community seemed to really agree that was the right call. It sounds like it. And we saw other success stories backing this up. Someone mentioned an R730XD server with an older HBA330 running Trueness, which also uses ZFS. Right. They said, whenever a drive fails, the caddy gives an orange light indicating which drive failed, and it works like a charm with hot spares. So you get that nice physical identification, and ZFS handles the automatic rebuild seamlessly with the HBA. That sounds pretty smooth. Plug and play reliability almost? Pretty much. And it's not just about compatibility or performance. It's also cost and simplicity. Ah, the money aspect. Yeah. Someone wisely pointed out, why buy an extra card if your motherboard already has enough SATA ports? If you're using SATA drives and you don't need a ton of them, you might not even need any extra card, HBA or otherwise. True. Save some cash. Definitely. And even if you do need an HBA for SAS drives or more ports, it's generally cheaper than a full Paterk. Plus, people like the flexibility angle. How so? Well, you can always add a Peric later if, for some reason, your needs drastically change and you decide you want hardware RAID. It's usually easier to add than to remove or bypass later. Someone even praised the Dell engineers who are not upselling you stuff you don't need. Huh. That is refreshing. When the vendor tells you not to buy the more expensive option. It really shows how strong the ZFS and HBA argument is in these communities. Okay, but surely there's some case for the peer, right? Not everyone was just ditching it completely. No, absolutely not. There were definitely counter arguments. Some folks championed the peer for its future flexibility. The idea being, well, what if you want to switch away from ZFS later or repurpose the server with traditional hardware RAID? Okay, I can see that logic. Keep your options open. Right. One user said something like, having the peer will give you more flexibility. Just don't get the battery back to write cache, which is often unnecessary with ZFS anyway. And didn't some people say certain peer did work okay in pass-through? Yes, there were mentions. Specifically, someone had good experiences with the older Dell Peer RSH310 Mini, often found in R720 servers. They claimed it provided real direct-to-drive data, including SMART. So it seems some specific models, particularly older ones, might handle it better, but it's not a guarantee across the board. Right, sounds like a bit of a lottery depending on the specific card and firmware. Exactly. And another point in favor of the PRC sometimes is disk failure management. Ah, the blinking lights. Precisely. Hardware RAID controllers are generally pretty good at lighting up an LED on the exact failed drive caddy. ZFS working through an HBA doesn't inherently control those chassis LEDs in the same direct way. So you might have to figure out which drive failed based on its serial number in the OS. Often, yes. People mention workarounds like meticulously labeling drive caddies with serial numbers. It's doable, but someone admitted replacing a drive in a ZFS pool can be really, really picky compared to just yanking the drive with the blinking light in a hardware RAID setup. Yeah, I can imagine fumbling around trying to match serial numbers under pressure not ideal. But these purse advantages, they come with downsides, right? Price being one. Price is a big one, yeah. Yeah. Perksers are usually more expensive than HBAs. And then there's the whole performance argument again. As that one user put it so well, hardware rate is not needed anymore. CPUs today can handle it way better than 2004 CPUs. That's a great point. Modern multi-core CPUs barely break a sweat handling the overhead of software RAID like ZFS. The dedicated hardware controller isn't the necessity it once was for performance. Exactly. The CPU bottleneck argument for hardware RAID is largely history for most use cases now. Plus, trying to force a purse to act like an HBA by flashing it to IT mode firmware, that can be a headache. Oh, I've heard about IT mode flashing. Sounds <laughs> tricky. It can be. Guides exist for some models like the H710, but not others like the H700, according to one user. And there's always a risk of bricking the card if something goes wrong. It's often just simpler and safer to buy the right tool for the job, which is the HBA if you're using ZFS. So pulling back to the bigger picture, why this huge enthusiasm for ZFS in the first place? 
What makes it worth potentially navigating these hardware choices? Well, the community's excitement is really understandable when you look at what ZFS offers. It's not just RAID. It's this uh, comprehensive approach to data integrity. You get features like copy on write, snapshots for instant backups and rollbacks, built-in compression, and crucially, end-to-end -end checksumming to detect and even correct silent data corruption. Things that traditional hardware RAID controllers just don't do. Exactly. They operate at a lower level, just managing the array. ZFS operates with the data itself, ensuring its integrity from application right all the way down to the disk platter and back. And that point about CPU power really resonates. Quoting that user again, hardware RAID mattered a lot more when you're CPU limited. That's rarely the case now. It's true. Cheap, powerful, multi-core CPUs have changed the game. Software-defined solutions like ZFS are incredibly efficient now, making them ideal for modern systems, especially flexible environments like Proxmox, where you want that granular control. Are there other sources confirming this trend? Oh, yeah. Tech outlets like Serve the Home constantly highlight ZFS's strengths, managing huge storage pools efficiently, its self-healing capabilities. That automatic detection and correction of data rot is a massive deal for anyone whose data actually matters. Okay, yeah. Game changer territory. Definitely. And HPAs just fit perfectly into this picture. They provide that clean, unfiltered path to the drives that lets ZFS do its job properly, ensuring you actually reap all those benefits. No controller getting in the way, hiding things, or messing with the data flow. All right. This has been super insightful. So let's try and distill this down into some practical tips for someone listening who's planning their Proxmox build right now. What are the key takeaways? Okay. Takeaway number one, choose an HBA for ZFS Bliss. If you're serious about ZFS, especially with SAS drives, get a proper HBA like that Dell HBA 355i or a similar LSI-based card in IT mode. That's the gold standard. And if you're using SATA drive? Check your motherboard first. If it has enough ports, you might not need any extra card at all. Save yourself some money in a PCIe slot. Good point. Okay, takeaway two. Skip the Puritit unless you have a very specific need. If your plan is ZFS, that Puritity is likely overkill and potentially a complication. Put that money towards more RAM or another drive instead. Well, what if you think you might want hardware RAID later? Then maybe double check with Dell or your vendor about adding a pair up later. It's often possible. Don't buy it up front just in case if ZFS is your primary goal today. Makes sense. Third takeaway. Plan for disk failures. Remember, ZFS with an HBA might not automatically blink the failure light on the drive caddy. Right, the serial number, huh? Yeah. So either look into software tools like Lead Cattle or Leadmon, which might be able to control chassis LEDs depending on your hardware, or just do the simple thing. Label your drive caddies clearly with their serial numbers. Future you will thank you. Definitely. Been there. Okay, fourth. Embrace ZFS's power. Don't just use it as basic RAID. Leverage the good stuff. Set up regular snapshots. Consider using ZFS Sendrasy for backups. Configure hot spares. Remember that TrueNAS example? With hot spares, ZFS handled the failure automatically, just like good hardware RAID would. So configured right, it can be just as convenient. Absolutely. And finally, number five. Stay flexible, but don't overcomplicate things unnecessarily. Starting with an HBA or just motherboard ports is simple, cost-effective, and optimal for ZFS. If, down the road, your needs genuinely change in a way that demands a purse, you can cross that bridge then. Don't optimize for a hypothetical future problem today. Nicely summed up. The community consensus really does seem clear. For Proxmox and ZFS, ditching the PRS is often the way to go. It unlocks performance, saves money, and lets ZFS do what it does best. Yeah, an HBA like that HBA 355i really seems to be the key enabler providing that direct access ZFS craves for data integrity and flexibility. For sure. While, okay, the purse might have niche uses or appeal to those wanting maximum future hardware flexibility, for the vast majority building a ZFS system now, it looks like an unnecessary complication and expense. And that user's comment really sticks. Hardware RAID is a dead-end tech anyway. Pretty bold statement. But it reflects that shift driven by powerful CPUs. It really does. This isn't just about saving a few bucks on a controller. It's about building a more robust, modern, and potentially more reliable storage system by letting the best tool for the job, in this case, ZFS, do its work unimpeded. So the message is, go ahead, configure that server with confidence. Your ZFS-powered Proxmox setup, likely running through an HBA, can be a real powerhouse. No purse needed for that tech triumph. Absolutely. Which leads to a final thought to chew on. That idea, hardware RAID, is a dead-end tech. It points to a bigger shish, doesn't it? Hmm, how so?
Think about other areas where specialized hardware used to be king. Are we seeing more functions being absorbed, maybe even done better, by powerful software running on general purpose CPUs? You know, things like networking functions, security appliances. Ah, uh, interesting. Software defined everything. Exactly. So the question for you, the listener, is how does this changing landscape, this increasing power of software and standard CPUs, influence how you think about designing systems or making tech investments in the future? Where else might dedicated hardware be becoming optional?